Okay, so today we're going to be looking at a hyperbola. Now, a hyperbola actually has two parts to it. See, here's a hyperbola. It goes, the plane goes perpendicular through those, that double cone. So we get this part and this part. Okay, that's the very front that kind of just shows you. Now, if you turn to this page right here, it starts with CS3 hyperbolas. So the definition of a hyperbola is the set of all points in the plane such that the difference is the distance from the two points known as the foci, and that, that distance, that difference of those distances has to be a constant. Okay, that's not really the most important part, but we'll kind of talk about it a little bit. So if I took this distance from this foci to this point right here, and this distance from the foci to that same point, this minus this is always going to be the same for every point. Yeah? Oh, get one. Okay, if it goes in, if x comes first, it's going to go in the x direction. That's the way it's going to open. So when x comes first, it's going to go this way. Okay? If y comes first, then it's going to have to open up and down, so it's going to go this way. So that's a very important thing to understand, is that when x comes first, it's opening left and right. When y comes first, it's opening up and down. Okay? The center. The center is always going to go hk. But look at it here. When y comes first, it goes hk like this. We have to be careful with that. a is always going to be the first number. It's not what's larger, like it was with ellipses. With ellipses, a was whatever value is larger. With hyperbolas, a is whatever comes first. Um, the transverse axis, that's where it opens. So like this is a transverse axis, and this is the transverse axis. We'll get to conjugate axis when I show you an example. Um, a and b are going to be used to help form a rectangle, which I'll show you. The foci is the distance. It has to be c units from the center. Now look at this, guys. What do we use for ellipses? a squared minus b squared equals c squared. With um, hyperbolas, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Hyperbola. And the foci are always going to lie on the transverse axis. So right here is the transverse axis. My foci have to be inside the hyperbola. There's where the foci have to be, inside the hyperbola, always. Then we're also going to find the asymptotes by using point-slope formula. We're going to be substituting in here for our x and y, here for our slope. That's a lot of information, but once we do one, I think it'll seem pretty easy to you. First of all, what do we have to have it equal to? One. So we have to get this equal to 1. So I'm going to divide by 36. Now my equation becomes x squared over 9 minus y squared over 4 equals 1. What's the center going to be? 0, 0, just like if it had been an ellipse. There's our center. Now, the transverse axis endpoints, we look at whichever number is larger. This is larger. We're going to go out that far in the x direction because it's under the x. So I'm going to go to the right 3 and to the left 3. Those are called the transverse axis endpoints. It can also be called the vertices. So those are going to be at 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. The conjugate axis endpoints, this is the smaller number. So how far are we going to go out? Two in the x direction, or sorry, two in the y direction, both ways, up two, down two. So that's going to be at zero, two, and zero, negative two. So this is the same so far, it's the same as the ellipse. Now is where it gets a little different. If this had been an ellipse, I would draw the ellipse. Because it's a hyperbola, I'm going to draw a rectangle. Draw a rectangle to guide us in drawing the hyperbola. 
we go from corner to corner through the center and we make asymptotes corner to corner through the center now we look at what came first so what came first X so these are going to open in the X direction that's the way it's going to look to find the foci we have to do a squared which is 9 plus b squared which is 4 equals c squared so c would be radical 13 these foci always have to be in the hyperbola so I would go out about three and a half units right and left here's a foci here's a foci so the foci are going to be at radical 13 0 and negative radical 13 0 The last thing is the equation. Yes? So for the foci, is it the same as hyperbola is where the center is not at 0, 0, they have to change it? We'd have to go out that far, yeah. Mm -hmm. The equation of the asymptotes now. So we know that the asymptote goes through the center. Now all I have to do is know the slope. So how far did I rise and how far did I run? What's the slope of that line? Two thirds. And what about on this one? How far did I rise and how far did I run? Negative two thirds. Good. So the equations of those asymptotes are going to be y minus zero equals plus or minus two thirds times x minus zero because it had to go through the center, zero, zero. And so it's going to be y equals plus or minus two thirds x. That's the equation of the asymptotes. Any questions on that? All right, let's go to one a little bit harder. Now, here's the most important part is getting the center correct. If this center isn't correct, everything will be wrong. Here's where most people tell me the center is if before we talk about it. They're like, oh, 2, negative 1. Wrong. It's negative 1, 2. It's negative 1, 2. So the center is going to be at negative 1, 2. And that's because it has to go x, y. Now, the transverse axis endpoints. Let's go ahead and plot the center first before we do that. So I'm going to plot negative 1, 2. That's my center. Whatever comes first determines the transverse axis endpoints. It's not what's larger, guys. It's what comes first. So what comes first, x or y? So what am I going to do? Go how far in the y direction? So I'm going to go up 3, and I'm going to go down 3. Those are the transverse axis endpoints, also called the vertices. So all I have to do, my x stayed the same. I went up 3. My x stayed the same, and I went down 3. The conjugate axis endpoints are whatever comes second. So what are we going to do for that? Go to the right 4, and go to the left 4. So those points are going to be at negative 5, 2, and 3, 2. Now I create the rectangle. To create the asymptotes, I go corner to corner through the center. Which way am I going to draw my hyperbola? Up and down or left and right? Up and down because that's what came first. I never go inside that box, that rectangle. That's my guideline, how to graph it. Okay, the foci. 
I have to find out what C is. So I have to do A squared, A always comes first, plus B squared, doesn't really matter actually for this situation. And so C is going to be 5. What am I going to do? Left and right 5 or up and down 5? Up and down 5. All right. Who can tell me what those points are? And? Good. If you need to, you could count. You could just say, okay, negative one, one, two, three, negative three. You can do it that way. I mean, I prefer you saying, oh, two plus five, two minus five, but. All right, so now the equations of the um, asymptotes. Well, we know that it goes through this point, and we know that point is negative one, two. So I know it has to go y minus y sub one equals, now I need the slope. How far did we rise and how far did we run? How far did we go up? Three fourths, right? So it's going to be plus or minus three fourths times x plus one. And normally you would have to now multiply this out and do all that to get into point slope formula, but I'm just going to let you keep it. I'm, I'm sorry, this is point slope formula. To make it get into um, slope intercept form, you'd have to multiply it all out. But I'm going to let you leave it in point slope form. Okay? We will at the end, okay? Letter C. On C, we've got this right here. What are we going to have to do to get it into a form that we can do everything? Yeah, complete the square. So I'm going to have 25x squared minus 50x minus 4y squared plus 24y equals 111. What can we factor out of these two? So if I take out a 25, I'm left with x squared minus 2x. What can we factor out of here? Negative 4, right? And what are we left with? y squared, and you have to be careful with this, guys. A lot of people say, okay, it's y squared plus 6y, but what is it? Minus 6y. I'm trying to show you all the places where people make mistakes. So now I have to take half of this and square it. So what is that? 1. I really added on 25, though. Half of 6 is 3. Squared is 9. But we really did what? Minus 36. So this is going to be 25 times x minus 1 squared minus 4 times y minus 3 squared equals, this is 136 minus 36, so that's going to just be what? 100. What do we always have to get it equal to in a uh, hyperbola? So it has to be a 1 here. I'm going to divide by 100. So now we've got x minus 1 squared over 4 minus y minus 3 squared over 25 equals 1. Yeah? Where are you talking about here? Uh, no, other side. There? The y, the y, isn't it? Well, I put the subtraction symbol here. Is it always subtraction, so you have to make it a, an addition? Is mm -hmm. the negative 4 cancels out? No, it's, it's minus, and then it's 4 over 100, so it's just 25. Uh-oh, is it right? All right, so what's the center going to be, guys? 
1 30. Okay, we're just going to find the vertices. The vertices is the same thing as the transverse axis endpoints. So what's that going to be? Three, three, I agree with. And what else? Negative one, three. Does everybody see why? How far are we going out? Two in the what direction? X direction. Okay. And then the other thing we're just going to write is the asymptote equations. So here's the center. Can you do it without graphing it? That's our goal is to be able to do it without graphing it. So it's going to go y minus 3 equals. Can you see how you can actually find the slope even without having a graph? Because how far up and down would I go? And how far left and right? 2. So it's going to be plus or minus 5 halves times what? X minus 1. Good. Okay, guys, don't bother writing this last one down. Let's just do it together and watch. Find the equation. I want to change from what it was. Find the equation of a hyperbola with a center of negative 4, 3, a vertical transverse axis with A equals 5 and C equals 13. A lot of things going on there. But you can get a point just by understanding how to write the very first part. Look at this, vertical transverse axis. So this is telling me that my center's at negative 4, 3, but it has a vertical transverse axis, so it's going this way. So what's going to come first, x or y? Y. So how's it going to go? Y minus negative 4? Y minus 3, right? Over something, I don't know what yet. Minus what? And I don't know what goes under there yet. Equals 1, right? Now, what did we always say about A and B? What always comes first? A. So what's going to go under here? 25. Okay. Now I have to figure out what B is because B goes under here. It always goes A, B in these. So I'm going to have to do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I know some of you already know what B is, though, don't you? Do you know that triple, 5 blank 13? 12, good. Okay, so what's going to go under here then? 144. And that would be the equation for that. What questions do you have on that one? See how tricky that was, though, right here? Because it had that vertical transverse axis, y had to come first instead of x. A always is here. It's not what's larger. It's just whatever um, A is. has to come there. Any questions? Yeah, I'm sorry. When you have one that's like the factory of C, mm -hmm. well, how do you tell which one would come first? Whichever one's positive. Okay. So if my y squared term had been positive, I would put that first. Okay. And back to that whole thing, like being confused about negative 4. We were not dividing by a negative 100. We were dividing by a positive 100. So a negative divided by a positive is a negative, and that's why that's still subtraction. I think, were you thinking we were dividing by a negative 100? Yeah. Okay, that's why. All right, anything else? Okay, if it went too fast, go back and watch it again because we are out of time.